wild Pacific salmon head bravely upstream to spawn, swift and tumultuous rivers aren't the only obstacles they face. North of Squamish, British Columbia, a spawning channel was created in the 1990s to help spawning and rearing coho salmon. Along the channel intake was an undersized culvert beneath a power pool. The culvert was narrowed by a buildup of gravel at one end, preventing water from reaching the spawning channel. Branch 100 Creek, like a lot of the smaller little tributaries and these smaller scale projects, were restoring connectivity. The salmon require access to the, where they're going to spawn to what we call overwintering or rearing habitat. Large pond areas or pool areas that they can spend one to two years before they move out into the Squamish River itself. On their journey from the Squamish River to the Pacific Ocean, juvenile Chinook salmon stop in the estuary at Howe Sound to feed and acclimatize to salt water in a process known as smultification. In the 1970s, a five kilometer long dike was built at the river's outlet, blocking the fish from the important estuary north of Vancouver. The river then flushed them out to the ocean before they were ready. With support from multiple partners, the Squamish River Watershed Society replaced a round culvert with a larger box culvert, which now holds water during all but the lowest tides. It has baffles inside, which are like speed bumps that slow the water. This makes the passage easier for these young wild salmon and other species at risk and gives them better access to the estuary. Having that resting period in the brackish waters of the estuary before they hit Howe Sound in the Salish Sea will vastly improve their survival. We've had the good fortune to really be engaged at all level with Indigenous knowledge. It's all part of Squamish Nation reconciliation. 